one in Zion. God is good, isn't he? And he is worthy to be praised. And we're here this day to worship the Lord our God in spirit and in truth. Amen? Amen. Let us all get a hymn or stand. It's on the screen. We're going to sing together a hymn of adoration. What a fellowship. in your presence and lift up the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for everyone that is here and those that are on the way. We just ask you, Lord God, to send a word from on high today so that it will be productive in our lives and help us, Lord God, to go on a little while longer. Now, Lord, that we're here, we're going to lift up the name of Jesus. We're going to worship you. We're going to magnify you. We're going to exalt your name. Because you have been and continue to be so very good to us. We love you, Lord. And we thank you in advance for what we know you're going to do in this service today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
seated. We will now have our sharing of joy from our greeters ministry. Good morning, Zion. It's a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Do we have anybody that's visiting with us this morning? Anybody? <laughs> Somebody? Nobody? Would you mind standing introducing yourself? Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here to worship this morning with everyone. I'm Carolyn. I'm the eldest of Mary Smith. Good morning. My name is Jennifer Smith, and I am the baby of Marilyn Smith. <laughs> One of and my grandchild, too. Yay. Yes, good morning. Uh, my name is Angel, and I'm here to support the family, too. How you doing, Marilyn? We are so glad you came to worship with us today because you could have been somewhere else. So we thank you for coming. And to those who may be in our lower auditorium or any of our social media platforms, we say welcome to you also. And I'd like to extend a special welcome to our speaker of the hour and welcome you to the church with a genuine fellowship. Amen. Have a blessed day, and I hope you all have a great week. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Easter. We do have a few announcements today. Um, I do want um, the Zion members to know that on tomorrow at 7 p.m., we will have the first of our Zoom Christmas celebration um, meetings. If you haven't received an email from me and you would like to participate in planning of our Christmas celebration or participate in the day of the celebration, please see me immediately after morning worship or see Destiny, since she's also down there, and give her your email address and your phone number so that I can um, be sure to include you on it. Um, we need all hands on deck for the Christmas celebration. How many people was there last year, year before last, and all that, right? So you know we need all hands on deck, right? All right, so please see me or Destiny after morning worship if you have not received the email. Also, Bible study resumes um, on September the 13th at 7 p.m. Our own Dr. Morris Oliver will be teaching on the 13th. I will be teaching on the 20th, and Sister Shackleford will be teaching on the 27th. Somebody say amen. amen. So I invite you to come on the Zoom so we all can learn a little something more than we knew before. Amen? Amen. Choir rehearsal will be Thursday, September the 14th at 3 p.m. We had our new members class this morning, and um, I want to thank those who came in to support Cindy and George, who are our new class members, uh, helped them with the answers, some of the answers and things. And it was more of a refresher for us old heads, right? It was a refresher for us old heads. So the next um, class will be September the 24th at 8.45. And I invite you to come on um, in, if you can get up, y'all, you know, you get up for work, so come on in here, 8.45, and we're going to um, go a little further with our lesson three. Um, of our new members um, class. Also, um, I, we've been asking for members, um, asking our members for items for Caritas. You know, um, Caritas is our neighbor two blocks away, and we're building our relationship with them. We're building our relationship with them, and they has, have expressed the need and that need is um, several items. They say they need is toothbrushes, toothpaste, soap, shampoo, um, hair conditioner, and deodorant. Those are the things they say they most need. That's what they need the most. So if you would, sir, ma'am, you know, pick up a few things for Caritas, bring it in. I think Alfreda's keeping the box over there in the back of the ushers, or just give it to one of the ushers. They know where to keep it. 
Um, the 24th is the deadline that we're asking because we want to go ahead and turn it over to them. So you have until the fourth Sunday. And they're, they, I talked to them, and they're supposed to get back with me and let me know whether they are going to, um, some are coming for our homecoming, amen? Whether they will pick it up on homecoming Sunday or if, you know, we can make arrangements during the week prior to homecoming um, to deliver them or for those items to be picked up. So please, sir, please, ma'am, you know, if you can just go to the dollar store, go to Dollar General or whatever and pick up a, couple, a few of those things, they would be extremely grateful. Amen? Amen. As I just said, our homecoming is October the 1st. The details are on the back of the um, back reverse side of the um, program. And you all know how we roll. You all know. Y'all, for those who don't know, we are the church with the genuine fellowship, and Zion likes to eat. <laughs> I'm just telling the truth. Zion likes to eat. And they also like to bring stuff. Amen. So if you want a good meal, and a good word, word first, meal second, <laughs> in that order, then come on out with us. Our homecoming will be 11 o'clock instead of 10 o'clock in order for the food to be prepared. So that service will be 11 o'clock. Um, come on out to homecoming. We always have a good time. Somebody say amen. amen. Tell them that's just how it is. We enjoy being together. We are family, y'all, and we act like family, don't we? When we and put throw food in the mix, y'all already know. So come on out to our homecoming on October the 1st. The list is there, the foods that we're asking you to bring. It's on October the 1st. If you have any questions, you can see me. You can see Tyrone over here. If you have any questions about um, the menu or anything about um, homecoming. Also, um, on that every first Sunday, which will be homecoming Sunday, we have um, prayer. You know, we have a lot of things to pray for. But you know what? God is so good. He's already answering our prayers. But that don't mean we stop praying, do we? We still got to keep praying. God has blessed us, is blessing us, and will bless us. And so we're asking everyone to come at 915 to 945, or 1015 to 1045 for October. But all other months is 9.15. But this coming homecoming, since we're starting late, it will be 10.15 to 10.45 for our prayer time. Amen? Amen. Also, um, Jersey Sunday. You know, we do jerseys around here. Jersey Sunday will be fourth Sunday, September the 24th, Zion. So whatever team you represent, come representing, all right, on the fourth Sunday in this month. Also, there will be um, the youth meeting, Sons and Daughters of Amani, will be the second Saturday of each month. And we're asking you to have your children um, see Miss Long if you have children that want to participate in the Sons and Daughters of Amani. We also, we are coming up in October, we'll be celebrating Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Amen. All of us, I feel, know someone who's been through it. Amen? And so we here at Zion are uh, going to um, recognize Breast Cancer Awareness once our uh, own Joyce Easter, who's been through it, has led the charge. She's leading the charge. And so we're asking you, um, if you would, to come. And we're going to have, we have T-shirts available on the Zion page, Zion. And we're going to be giving a donation to the breast cancer um, uh, that Joyce is um, affiliated with, the charity that Joyce is affiliated with. We're going to be giving a donation. And so some of the proceeds from the shirts will go towards that. So we're asking you um, to look on the website, order your T-shirts. We're going to wear them third Sunday. Now, there's more than one design, so if you want more than one and want to wear them, because Breast Cancer Awareness is the whole month of October, feel free to do so. But we're asking you to get your shirt and to wear them third Sunday in support of Breast Cancer Awareness. Amen? Amen. Amen. And finally, um, briefly, I need to see um, Cheryl Claudette and Cynthia Jones after morning worship, just briefly, okay? All right, let the church say amen. 
Amen. And we will now have a special presentation by our sister, Alfreda Cheetah. Good morning, Zion. Um, as some of us know, and some of us do not know, this is Grandparents Day. We celebrate Grandparents Day at Zion on the second Sunday of every September because we love our grands. And a lot of us are here because of our grandparents. My daughter is a fourth generation Cheatham in this church. And um, I hope that the next one we have will also be part of a generational person in this church. But we want to acknowledge all of our grandparents that um, our members here at Zion. I know they're not all here today, but we still want to acknowledge them. And um, we have a little token for them. Every year we try to come up with something to give our grandparents. And this year, we figured that they could have something that they could see every day. So this year we had mugs made up. And I'm pretty sure you'll like them because they reflect Zion. <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to call the names. If you're able to come get them or someone is able to come get a mug, come get your mug, we would greatly appreciate it. All right? We're going to start in alphabetical order. Our first grandmother in the congregation today is Ms. Joyce Allen. <laughs> and we have the dynamic duo of Reverend Brenda Anderson and Deacon Tyrone Anderson. Ms. Cheryl Braxton. Come on. Um, I made the list this year. I'm free to cheat them. You folks. All right. We have Ms. Jean Coleman or anyone that can represent Ms. Jean Coleman. Ms. Tina Douglas. Ellis, Conrad Feggins, and Sharon Feggins, Ms. Glennis Flippin, and Mr. John Flippin, Loita Ford, Ms. Queen Galashaw, Ms. Louise Gardner, Ms. Shirley Giles, Ms. Calperni Augustus. <laughs> Ms. Yvonne Hamilton. Ms. Ruth Harrell. Ms. Erlia Harris. Ronald Hinton. Lena Hopkins, Cindy Jackson, Ms. Wanda Jackson, Ms. Cynthia Jones, Ms. Doris Jones, Ms. Connie Junius, Ms. Glennis Junius, Ms. Candace Lacey, Ms. Claudette Gray, Mr. George McKeever, Ms. Stephanie Mincy. Mr. James Muzon, Mr. Wallace Munford, Mrs. Candy Petaway, Ms. Evangeline Robinson, Mrs. Francis Robinson, Deaconess Teresa Shackelford, 
Miss Elizabeth, Tennessee. Miss Betty Times, Mr. Be Mr. John Times. Miss Kay Tungstall. Miss Florence Warren. Deacon Carl White. Miss Easter Wilburn. Mrs. Floridine. I hope I'm pronouncing that correct. Williams. And Deaconess Nan Wilson. And I'd like to extend a special grandparents mug out to a woman, a, a most beautiful spirit that I have ever got to know next to my grandma and my mom. And that's Miss Miss Nellie Crump. She is awesome. She is grand. And I've had the opportunity to work with her on a small, few small projects, but you know what? I want to be just like her when I grow up. She is, <laughs> she got the willpower, and I know that she loves God. You can see it all over her. I'm sorry. Okay, Miss Olivia King. So Zion, that is the, num the names that were turned in that we have and that I know of. Um, we only did enough mugs to cover those names. But if you know of a grandparent that is a member of Zion, just give me the name and I will try to get them a mug at a later date. But at this time, I just want to say, we want to say, Zion Grands, we love you. We hope you have a beautiful day because it doesn't just stop here. And that, you know, may God bless you on your endeavors as being a grandparent, because I know for a fact with a lot of you all, I see you with your grandchildren, and it makes a difference. And uh, I have to say, when you keep them you know, planted in the Lord, they will not stray. They will not stray. And a lot of us wouldn't make it if we didn't have grandparents. So enjoy the rest of your day. Um, Zion says thank you, and we love you. And um, we'll try to do it a little better next year. Take care. Amen. Thank you, Alfreda. And happy Grandparents Day to all of us grandparents. Amen. Y'all wave give away. Amen. Amen. We will now prepare ourselves for our offering. Deaconess Nanny Wilson will now come and lead us in prayer. Good morning. God loves a cheerful giver. There are three ways that we can give our tithes and offerings here at Zion Baptist Church. By mail to the church office or Drop it in the mail slot at 1923 Decatur Street, Richmond, Virginia. The offering box located in the back where we can drop it either on our entrance or our exit. And lastly, we can give by Givelify donations to the Zion Baptist Church, South Richmond. Make sure you put the South Richmond because we want to make sure Zion gets this, this Zion, this Zion gets the donation. Let us pray. God loves a cheerful giver. Just as we give, God gives to us. The same measure with which we give, that's the measure that God will use given to us. Now, Lord, we ask that you would just bless the offerings and the tithe as they are given, and may they be used for the uplifting of your kingdom right here on earth. In your name I ask these things. Amen.
welcome everyone again to the Church with Genuine Fellowship and happy Grandparents Day. Amen. Happy Grandparents Day. Now, raise your hand again if you're a grandparent. Wow. And how many great grandparents? How many great great grandparents? Not yet? Okay. Okay, well, the grandparents will tell you they're great grandparents anyway, right? All right. Um, just wanted to uh, make sure that we welcome everybody who's listening online, those who are visiting here and who might be downstairs as well. And I see uh, Miss Julia in the back, I do think. Miss, Miss Pam Johnson, all the way from Fredericksburg. Um, didn't stand up, but I see, I see you back there. And the Smith family, the Smith family is in the house. The Smith family is in the house. It's good to see, see you and see you, AJ. It's good to see you back there, too. It's good to see everybody. Um, you're welcome again to the Church with Genuine Fellowship. And as, as such, I would just like to share, I know the church does look out for our sick and shut-in members. It's good to see Ms. Gallishaw back in the house. Yeah. Good to see her. And... You read, you don't see Sister Oliver today. She got a bug, so she's down. Um, so I ask that you ask for your prayers for her. So I had to ride down them 50 plus miles by myself, and I got to drive all the way back by myself. So feel sorry for a brother, okay? <laughs> Last week was just a wonderful, wonderful day, and I want to thank everybody who had a part of the cards, the uh, reception. The blessing, the, the, the gifts that you gave were just wonderful. And God has a way of blessing uh, exactly when you need it. And I needed it. We needed it. And we thank you for being a part of that. When the tank is empty, God has a way of putting a little bit, a little bit more fuel in the tank. And I thank the Lord for that. Uh, so I'm happy to be your 9.5 pastor. I accept that. 9.5. I thank you. Also, um, the Bible study will resume on Wednesday, and we're going to do something called I Am a Church Member. I Am a Church Member by Tom S. Rayner. We're going to have the first, the first class on, uh, on this Wednesday at 7 o'clock. And this is a wonderful little book. This is going to give you time to be able to get it if you, if you need it. But the books can range anywhere from, you might be able to find a used one from uh, anywhere from 5 to $10. But I am a church member by Tom S. Rayner, and it looks like this. And we're going to start getting it going on this, this coming Wednesday. Now, the following two Wednesdays, they'll be doing something a little different. But I'll be following back up uh, after that with I am a church member. Okay? So if you get a chance to maybe a used bookstore or maybe someone has it. I am a church member, Tom S. Rayner. Um, that's what we're going to be doing on Wednesday. So and it's a wonderful book. It really is eye-opening. It's very eye-opening on our relationship with Christ and our relationship within the church. Also today, it is my pleasure, since this is Grandparents Day, to introduce our preacher for the morning, Reverend Marilyn Smith. Uh, she is the mother of four, four grands, Four grands and two great grands. So she is. She has. She's blessed, and she's more than suitable to be preaching this message today. All right, all right. Known her for about ten years. She was serving at Shallow Old Site in Fredericksburg when I served there. I got to know, got to know her, and got to know the family members there as well. And uh, I saw something, and I'll say this, and she's probably going to get me for it. But I saw someone come out of their shell, and I saw someone with the fire of Jeremiah down in her bones. You wouldn't know it until you got next to her and you started feeling warm because the fire was shut up in her bones. But it was something in her that she, I'm not sure she realized she had in her. And I saw it come out, and I saw the Lord use her and work with her. She has a passion for working with the, the women of the church. I have seen her minister to people. She has such a unique way of ministering to people. Uh, she's also 
the foster mother of many. She has, did not mention that, but today, I mean, I hadn't mentioned it previously, but she has been a foster mother to many, many children. So in addition to being a grandparent, she's also, has also been a foster uh, parent. So without any more, someone with fire shut up in her bones, <laughs> Reverend Marilyn Smith will be preaching the word at the appointed time. And so when we know what we do, put your hand toward her. Say, Lord, 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 send the preacher. Send the preacher. Lord, Lord, send the preacher. Send the preacher. Lord, Lord, send the preacher. Send the preacher. God bless. <laughs> Uh, Deaconess Nan Wilson will come now with our prayer. We always need prayer. Lord hears, Lord answers. Let us keep up our line of communication with him. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you this morning for allowing us to come to this place called Zion, where we can assemble and worship you with love and with adoration. Lord, we just come knowing that you have inclined your ear to us and you are listening to us. And Lord, when we pray, you answer according to your will. You are provider of our needs and you give us everything in love and we appreciate it Lord and we want to let you know and we want to let others know that we love you we want to let others know that we are being observed Lord when we claim that we belong to you we want to walk that walk not only talk the talk but we want to practice what we are preaching when we are serving you Lord I want to thank you this morning just for being here and being able to say thank you, Lord, for all who have come today. Bless those grandparents today, Lord, because I tell you what, I, I just believe that um, if some of us could get by without being a parent, we would just become a grandparent. But Lord, we know that you have everything in decency and in order. And we know that if we listen to you and follow you, everything will be all right, even with the children. Lord, I want to thank you this morning because I believe that you did send a preacher. I believe, Lord, that and you just in my conversation with her for a few minutes, I know that she has that fire burning down within. And Lord, I just thank you that she's going to deliver the word. And I ask that you would have us to take it in and to be obedient to to the word. Bless those, Lord, who are struggling with illnesses. Bless those, Lord, who are struggling with grief. Lord, we know that we have elderly members in this church, and I want to thank you for the, the uh, inspiration, Lord, and, and knowledge and wisdom that they have imparted, that they have imparted to us, that we can follow and that we can love. Lord, I have learned from so many spiritual mothers, as I call them, in this church. But when I came, Lord Jesus, I know that you were here with them and you guided us. And sometimes we do need people, Lord, to help us to come to what you want us to be. We know that we aren't always qualified when we start getting up, but we know that you will qualify us. And Lord, I thank you this morning for that. Lord, bless this nation. We are in a terrible time. We, we just don't know, Lord, with our leaders, but we have to pray for them too. We have to pray, Lord, that they will listen to the people who know you, that they will have on their staff people who know you, and they can impart some wisdom, Lord, spiritual wisdom, as well as the political uh, beliefs that they have. Lord, I want to ask you this morning to let us just hear the word. Lord, let us just listen to the word. Lord, let us take that and take it back to those who don't know it, to share it, Lord, and to listen. 
for how can we follow, how can we know the word without the preacher? And let us honor the preachers. Let us honor the word. In the name of Jesus, keep us in the path of righteousness that we may go on, that we may show ourselves approved by studying the word. In the name of Jesus, I ask these things. Amen. Amen. And amen. Our scripture today is Deuteronomy, the 31st chapter, the first through the third verse, and then verses 7 and 8, and I will be reading from the New King James Version. That's Deuteronomy, the 31st chapter, verses 1 through 3, and then 7 through 8, and it reads, Then Moses went and spoke these words to all Israel. And he said to them, I am 120 years old today. I can no longer go out and come in. Also, the Lord has said to me, you shall not cross over this Jordan. The Lord your God himself crosses over before you. He will destroy these nations from before you, and you shall dis dispose them Joshua himself crosses over before you, just as the Lord has said. Verse 7. Then Moses called Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of good courage, for you must go with this people to the land which the Lord has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you shall cause them to inherit it. And the Lord... He is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. Hear the word of the Lord. Amen. 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 We will now have a musical celebration and followed by that the word of God from Minister Marilyn Smith. Let the church say amen.
marching to Zion, the beautiful, the beautiful city of God. Hallelujah. It is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. And first and foremost, I would like to give honor to my Lord and Savior who wooed me, who caught me, who delivered me, who freed me. I thank God for who he is. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I would like to recognize um, our pastor. Well, oh, I'm saying my pastor. He was my pastor twice. <laughs> but I want to recognize him and just thank him for allowing me to come and speak on Grandparents' Day. And I want to thank my family as well, my daughter, my son, my husband, my friends, and my family, and the beautiful people here at Zion. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And I just want to say happy Grandparents' Day. And it's good to be a grandparent, isn't it? It's like you can spoil them and give them back. You can give them candy and the parents have to pay for the dentist. <laughs> but it's good being a grandparent. It really is. But I'll be coming today. Um, you heard from um, Deuteronomy 31, but I'm also going to read uh, Joshua. Joshua 4, 19 through 24. And it reads as follows. The people crossed the Jordan on the 10th day of the first month. Then they camped at Gilgal, just east of Jericho. It was there at Gilgal that Joshua piled up the 12 stones taken from the Jordan River. Then Joshua said to the Israelites, in the future, your children will ask, what do these stones mean? Tell them, this is where the Israelites crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God, for the Lord your God dried up the river right before your eyes, and he kept it dry until you were all across, just as he did at the Red Sea, when he dried it up until we had all crossed over. Isn't that a miracle? Isn't that a miracle? And this is the blessed the word of our God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you humbly, but boldly to the throne of the cross. I come, Father God, just thanking you, Lord, for who you are. That you are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. That you are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. And you are our bright and morning star. And Father God, I just ask you in the name of Jesus to be with me today and I pray that you would just touch the heart of your people, dear God. I pray that they will hear the word and they will not keep it to themselves, dear God, but they will go tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. So, Father, I just thank you for this moment in time, and I just ask you to bless your holy word. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. 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 I would like for you to think with me today, stones of remembrance. Stones of remembrance. Have any of you ever saw something or even smelled something that brought back memories? Perhaps someone's voice or mannerisms reminds you of a loved one or one of your grandkids reminds you of one of your sisters, your brother, or your eccentric relative. <laughs> Or just sitting down looking at old pictures. And when you look at them, it brings back memories. It just brings back memories. I remember when we lived in Washington, D.C. And my father was stationed at Fort Myers in Arlington, Virginia. My mother had a heavy stainless steel coffee pot. Do you remember those <laughs> coffee pots? They were heavy. And then when they perked, you would see the coffee come up in that knob. Did anyone ever have one here? Did you have one? Oh yeah, my mother had one. And in the mornings, I'm gonna tell you, that house will be filled with the smell of fresh brewed coffee, amen? And even the days when we celebrate on 4th of July as a family in DC, my father always made it so very special for us, filling up a clean, large still, and I'm not saying Rubbermaid, 
It was steel. Do you remember the steel trash cans that we used to have? Well, we did in D.C. And he would fill them up with sodas, and he would be barbecuing, and those were the days of yesteryears. Amen. And they were the good old days. And I treasure those days, and I miss those days. But we, as grandparents, are making memories of our own, amen, with our own children and grandchildren. So what kind of memories are you leaving for your grandchildren today? Uh, my father has gone to glory, but every time my mother visits his grave at the Arlington Cemetery, she leaves three stones, or sometimes even four, on top of his tombstone. Memories, stones of remembrance, amen? And I know each and every one of you have stones of remembrance. All of us do. Now, in the book of Joshua, the crossing of the Jordan River should take our spiritual minds back to the phenomenal crossing of the Red Sea. Can you picture it? I know that you have taught and you've read about the Red Sea. The power of the Lord was at full display. His mighty acts stunned the eyes of the people. I can imagine they could not phantom what they were seeing, but they knew it was the power and the work of the almighty God, mm -hmm. our sovereign God, the one who spoke the universe into existence. That's the kind of God we serve. Amen? Amen. Our God is merciful, and he hears the cries of his people. He came to their rescue like he came to my rescue, for he is the God who sees. If we were to ask Hagar, she would tell us how God saw her in the midst of her trouble. Amen? Amen. In the midst of her pain. She says in Genesis 16, 13, you are the God who sees. Yeah. Amen? Amen. And she even states, have I truly seen the one who sees me? As a rem memorial to God, she, placed, she named the place El, what? El Roy, a God that sees. Amen? Amen. Mm. We just serve a mighty God, and I just thank him for who he is. He is and it is comforting to know that the eyes of the Lord are in every place. Now, I want you to remember that. The eyes of the Lord is in every place. He's in our secret places. Okay? I want you to think about that. I really want you to think about that. Wherever we go, and you think that the church people don't see you, and I'm going to tell you, when I used to go out there, when I was in the world, I used to think that no one saw me. Whatever I did, I thought I was sneaking behind everybody's back. They didn't know what I was doing. Only my right and left hand knew what I was doing. All right? But when I became and had a relationship with the Lord, and one day I was just laying in the bed, and all of a sudden it just hit me. I said, God saw everything <laughs> that I did. But you know what? We have a forgiving God. He forgives us, and he sets us free. Amen? It is us that keeps ourselves in bondage by thinking about the past and thinking about what we should have done and what we should not have done. But the Lord wants us to be set free. Amen? How oh, Hallelujah. And so I just thank God that he forgave me <laughs> of all my secret things that I have done. So I did not see the Red Sea or the Jordan River supernaturally part, but I did witness a phenomenal miracle. 49 years ago, I gave birth to a son prematurely, and he was born with all of his intestines formed on the outside, which is called gastro. Skesis. They transferred him to Children's Hospital in Washington, D.C. And to make a long story short, because he was in there for three and a half months, and so um, the doctors called us one night, late at night, and he asked my husband and I, you have to come down to the hospital. Now, we lived in Dell City, Virginia, 
at the time. And so we had to go all the way into D.C. And they said that we had to sign papers because they used to give him cut downs on his body just to find places to feed him. And so they had ran out of places to feed him. And so the one that we had a sign for, it was a vein that's right above his ear. And we had a sign for that. And so anyway, after um, they did that, he still didn't get any better. And so my mother was a praying grandmother. Amen. All right now. You know about those praying grandmothers. Now, see, I wasn't saved, and I knew of God, but I wasn't saved at the time. But my mother prayed, and she used to go to tent revivals. Remember the tent revivals? Did you still have them here? No. I think we should bring those tent revivals back. What do you think? I think so. But anyway, she was going to the tent revival all week. And then she asked the pastor, would you mind going to Children's Hospital in D.C. and pray for my grandson? And he did. He did. And the nurses told my husband and I that he came there, he took a handkerchief, they said he placed it on my son's body, and he prayed, and he prayed, and he prayed. And then the nurse told me, she says, but after a while, I couldn't stand, understand the thing he was saying. You know what happened, don't you? <laughs> it was the Holy Ghost and him talking, amen? It was the Holy Ghost and him talking. But to make another long story short, stand up, Tony. 49 years ago, they told me, do you, after they did, you can sit down, baby. After um, they did all they can do, another night they called us and said, you know, we have done all we can do, all we can do, and we can't do anything else. Do you want him cremated? Now, can you imagine someone asking you, do you want your son to be cremated? Or do you want to have his body and go to a funeral home of your choice? And you know, I, I didn't even know what to say. But let me tell you something. When that man did go there and pray for my son, I'm going to tell you, he, his eyes opened, the lady said. His body seemed like it was starting to heal. And let me tell you, every time my husband takes him to the doctor, the doctors today... 49 years later, it's still saying to us, do you know these children were miracles? They did not live back then. They did not live back then. But look at God. God can do anything. There's nothing impossible that our God cannot do. Hallelujah. If I know he can save a wretch like me, undone, I know he can do anything. And I thank God for it. I thank him because we serve a mighty God. Yeah. I just thank him for just saving me. You just don't understand. You don't know, understand where I have been. But the Lord, he had favor upon me. And I just want to say thank you, God. So we were told that he, um, that he wasn't going to live, but I just thank God. I mean, I just did all <laughs> So tough. I didn't need the paper, did I? <laughs> But anyway, um, Tony is a living stone of remembrance. Every time my husband takes him to the doctor, they tell me. So just think about this. You remember Naaman? You remember Naaman? I mean, if Naaman can talk to us today, he will say he got healed by God. And what did he do? He was in the, they told him to go where? To the Jordan River. And he said it was a dirty, he said he didn't want to go in that river, but he listened to God, and he went there, and he dipped himself seven times. Yeah. And seven, it symbolizes completion and perfection. Yeah. And so we are perfected yeah. in Jesus the Christ. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. We should be able to shout in this place. Amen. For what God has done for us. And can you imagine witnessing the paralytic in Capernaum being healed by Jesus? You remember that? Jesus says, I will prove to you that the Son of Man has the authority on earth 
to forgive sins. Imagine Jesus turning to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. Isn't that awesome? All this time that he was paralyzed and his friends, his four friends, mm. took him and he saw the faith of the men mm -hmm. and the faith of the guy that was paralyzed. I just, you know, every time I read the Bible and you read all the stories, you know, those, you say they're stories, but it's real life stories. Mm -hmm. Because we have stories. People don't know our life, but we tell them our stories. Isn't that an awesome thing? How God saved you? Do you remember the time when God saved you? Do you remember that? Wasn't that an awesome feeling? Oh, my God. It was an awesome feeling. And I just thank God for saving us, all of us. And I know everybody in here probably is saved, huh? You all saved and sanctified? Amen. <laughs> Amen. In the Bible, stones were used for various purposes. Stones were used to destroy an enemy's field. Remember that? And they would choke up their wells. Stones was used to build city walls, pavement, weapons. And the Israelites used unhewn stones to erect altars to commemorate the Lord or a great spiritual event. And those were stones of remembrance. And the first memorial stone was... Um, Erected by Jacob, the very stone he used to rest his head on. You remember that? When he had that dream of going up and down those stairs, and the Lord had promised that he was going to do so much for him. And so he took that stone, and he put it upright, and he named it there. And that was a place for them to worship God. And as we reflect on the sermon title this morning, Stones of Remembrance, coming from the book of Joshua. The message that Joshua conveys to his readers is that God is a God that keeps his promises, All doesn't right. he? Right. He keeps his promises. God made a covenant with Abraham and his descendants to give them the land of Canaan. God was determined to carry out his promise. Now, the book of Joshua is the first of the historical books Joshua was the assistant and second in command, wasn't he? Do you remember that? Um, and he was the successor of Moses. And his name means Jehovah says. God had told Moses that he would not enter into the promised land because of his failure to obey his instructions. You know how it happens sometimes. I mean, you can be as good as you can be. And one thing that you can do will keep you from doing yeah. something. I tell you, it's one thing. He got so mad at those people grumbling all the time. Oh, we should have stayed and ate our soup in, in Egypt. You remember that? <laughs> I can't imagine because sometimes you get church people. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, did I say that? <laughs> church people sometimes. Sometimes we can be just like the people in the wilderness, okay? Oh, what color should we make this room? What should we do here? What should we do there? No one can agree. <laughs> but you know what? That's all right. You know, sometimes it's okay to, to complain, but just don't stay there. <laughs> just don't stay there. Then Moses asked the Lord to appoint a new leader for the community. In fact, Moses asked God to appoint someone who would guide the Israelites where they go and lead them into battle so the community of the Lord would not be like sheep without a shepherd. And y'all are so lucky to have this man as your shepherd. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do I not miss him? My heart burns when I see him. <laughs> it burns with joy knowing that he was my mentor when I was in school for four years, and he was my mentor, and he always gave me an opportunity to give the word. Always. He is an awesome man, and so y'all need to give your pastor a hand clap in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord answered Moses and says, take Joshua, son of Nun, who has the spirit in him, and lay your hands on him. So Joshua was presented before Eleazar, the priest. 
Joshua was commissioned publicly, you know that, publicly before the whole community to lead the Israelites over the Jordan River. In the first chapter of Joshua, the sovereign Lord told Joshua that Moses was now dead and it's time for you to lead the Israelites across the Jordan after all those years of wandering. Amen? Amen. And I'm going to send you to a place that is filled with what? Honey and, well, I'm saying it backwards, milk and honey, but you got it, all right? And they had wandered in the wilderness for 40 years because of disobedience and disbelief. You know, sometimes, think about it, we can be disobedient at times. We are like children. We can be very disobedient. We want it our way or no way sometimes, you know? And so they didn't get a chance to cross over the Jordan. It was all new blood, new blood that went across the Jordan. Hallelujah. And after the instructions of the Lord, God told Joshua to be strong and courageous. And this was said four times and three times in chapter one alone. Be strong and be courageous. And this is how God wants us to be. Amen. He wants us to be strong and courageous. We need to keep our suits on with God at all times. The armor of the Lord, keep it on because this world, look at this world. Look at, it's so much going on. Every time you turn on the news, it's something, it's one thing or another, floods, war, um, earthquakes, yes, just everything going on. Things that are right is wrong, things that is wrong is right. They try to infiltrate your mind and we have to be very careful no matter what we have to look at the word of God and if it does not align up with the word of God hey you got to go against it amen you have to go against it and so you know the God who created you the God that knows you make up your DNA he don't need to go to some lab and take your take your blood to a lab Because guess what? He already knows who you are. He knows your thoughts are far off. Hey, he knows what you think. He knows the intentions of your heart. Amen. So, hey, look, no matter where you go, whether it's heaven or hell, up or down, whatever, he's there where you are. He sees you. He sees you when you look at someone Uh cross-eyed. Amen. Uh He sees you when you give someone a good report. And say, how are you today? Because you know, it doesn't cost nothing to smile. It costs nothing. So please know that God will go before you in all that you do. So keep the faith and believe that God is a God of his promise. And I know I can do nothing, nothing without God. People sometimes think that they are doing it on their own. But I found out when I woke up in the morning, it wasn't because of me. It was because of the God who woke me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The job that you got, it wasn't because of your your studying or whatever. It's because of God. He already knew about that job long ago, long before we were born. Amen. So after God gave charge to Joshua, Joshua went and gave charge to the people of Israel. In short, Joshua gave instructions what to do. Finally, he says, when you see the, um, the, Levit- the Levitical priest carrying the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, your God, move out from your position and follow them. They want to stay at a distance behind the priest. The next day became the first day of their new lives. Joshua gave the word for the priest to pick up the Ark of the covenant and lead the people across the river and the sovereign God told Joshua today I will begin to make you a great leader in the eyes of all the Israelites he had big shoes to fill but God filled them for him what an awesome God we serve he is the Lord most high Jehovah Elion stones of remembrance amen oh hallelujah hallelujah and saints, let us imagine the scene Joshua going, I mean, Joshua giving the go-ahead for the 12 priests who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant that symbolizes the presence of God. When you saw that Ark, you know God was right there. Amen? Now, mind you, it was harvest season, 
and the Jordan was overflowing. But the word tells us as soon as the feet of the priest stepped in the water at the edge, ha, the water above that point began backing up. Amen. Now, it backed up. And it says from a great distance, do you feel like getting your shout on today? And I want to say it one more time. One more time. As soon as the feet, just imagine. As so, there you go. As soon as the feet hit the water, what yeah. happened? The water began to recede. And even the ground was dry. They passed over dry ground. So, you know, your good shoes <laughs> didn't get money. Did not get money. And I thank God for that. Yeah. But no one but God can part the waters. Yeah. No one but God can send manna from heaven or make the sun stand still. No one can make water come out of a rock yeah. or be a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of cloud, I mean fire by night. Amen. Yeah. Psalm 77, 14 says, you are the God who performed miracles. You display your power among the peoples. Mm -hmm. And so over two million but you know, some people said billion, some said millions, some said 300,000. But whatever it was, they all went over. What a mighty day they had. What a mighty, mighty good God. What is that song? Oh, no, I'm thinking of the wrong one. Okay. <laughs> Amen. But anyway, over two million cross over on dry ground. What a day. And what a mighty good day. And I believe they would say, even today, the word of the Lord leads us and he guides us, doesn't he? Yes. He leads us and he guides us because his word is a lamp unto our feet and is a light unto our path. I will be getting out of your way in one minute. After they crossed the Jordan, the Lord told Joshua to choose 12 men from each tribe. Each man was to get a stone from the middle of the Jordan where the priest was standing and they carried it on their shoulders. So you know what that's telling me? If they had to carry it on their shoulders, they must have been some large stones. <laughs> Amen? Because, you know, sometimes you can just carry But when they had to put it on their shoulders, I was thinking, well, it had to be a large stone. And so Joshua set the 12 stone as a memorial in Gilgal. So when the future, when their children asked them, what does those stones mean? And they would tell them, the stones are a reminder how great God yes. is. The Lord stopped the flowing of the water when the ark of the Lord's covenant went across and the stones stand as a memorial. Think of all the memorial stones that we have on, in our lives. Think of them. Yeah. Mine goes back when the Lord touched me in a place that I shouldn't have been. Touched me in the club. Let me see things that I never, I was higher than two kites. Not one, not two, maybe even three or four, but God spoke to me in the condition that I was in. Let me tell you, he says, where would you be if I were come today? I would have been splitting hell wide open. I'm telling you, but the Lord loved me enough to come where I was. So it tells me that God will go anywhere to get his children. Because we weren't born to die. We were born to live. But it's our choice whether we want to do good or do bad. It's our choice. Because God don't allow us to be puppets. Everything is our choice. So when the stones were set up at Gilgal as a reminder how faithful God is, he fulfilled the covenant promise he made to Abraham, to the people of Israel. And this is just one stone of remembrance, and there are many, many more. There is so much in the Bible that this world couldn't even contain it. Amen. So much that we don't know. But God gave us just enough to be saved. Amen. He gave us just enough to be saved. And this also teaches us as parents, grandparents, that we are to make stones of remembrance 
with and for our grandchildren, our family, and in our community. We are to let our love so shine that our friends and family would never forget the stones of remembrance when we leave this place. Amen. What that song says, when I fly away. Go ahead. Hallelujah. When I fly away, we want to leave memory stones, stones of remembrance. Will your stones of remembrance be for the good or will it be for the bad? It is our choice. God's memorials are so that we will never change by what he has done for us. It is not for just to remember. It's also to be able to change our future. Our remembrance stones, when we see ourselves going down the wrong path, Mm -hmm. we should allow the word of God to steer us back over. Because we are not perfect, and we are going to fail, but we're not going to stay down. We're not going to stick out. Thank God for forgiveness. And he didn't say one time or two times or three times. God is a forgiving God, and he will forgive us at all times. But we have to be able to ask him for forgiveness. We talked about various ways that stones were used. Stones was used to build place, build palaces and temples. As the building was being built, they used a stone called a cornerstone. Don't y'all know who that cornerstone is? A cornerstone was the main and largest stone. It was placed at the corner of the building. It allowed the builders to stay on course while they were continued to build. The cornerstone was usually one of the largest. The total weight of the building rested on this particular stone. If it was not, if it was removed, the building would collapse. The cornerstone was also the key to keeping the wall straight. The builders would take sidings along the edge of, the, of this part of the building. If the cornerstone was set properly, the stoneman could be assured that all the other corners of the building would be at the right angle as well. Are you at that right angle? I'm asking you today, are you at that right angle? And it's good to know when the pressures of life weighs us down, there's only one cornerstone that is capable enough to handle the weight. There's only one cornerstone we can trust to keep our lives straight, and that is Jesus the Christ. He is not just a rock. He is the chief cornerstone that Isaiah spoke of, which is tried and true. Amen. We serve a mighty God. Ephesians 2, 19 says, and are built on the foundations of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord. So I'm asking you today, are you covered in the blood of Jesus? Peter says he is the precious cornerstone, and we are the living cornerstone, the stone that God is building. The word tells us that together we are his house, built on the foundations of the apostles and the prophets, and the cornerstone is Jesus. Jesus! Say Jesus! Jesus! Jesus himself, we are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. So let's give God praise in this sanctuary, for he is worthy. 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 To be praised. Hallelujah. May God richly bless all of you. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Stones of remembrance. Amen. We're all, we're all stones of remembrance. Why don't we give the Lord some praise for the preacher who brought a word? Got a living stone down there, 49 years. What a testimony to the power of prayer. Stones were used for a lot of purposes. To destroy, to build walls, to put up pavements. 
to put up altars, but they were also for memorials. The chief cornerstone being Jesus Christ, the precious cornerstone. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. With the thought of the stones of remembrance and that chief cornerstone, this is a decision that all of us have to make. We have to make a decision. Do we accept Jesus Christ as our, our chief cornerstone where the building will be framed perfectly and we can go to heaven? Or will we not accept him and the build, building will fall down and we'll literally go south? It's our choice. This is your invitation to Christian discipleship. This is your invitation to give your life to Christ. If you'd like Christ to come into your life and be your chief cornerstone, let us all stand. Let us stand. You have the diaconate and the prayer ministry surrounding you now. If you'd like Christ to come into your life and be your chief cornerstone, this is your invitation now. Will you come today? Will you come today? let him come in today. Maybe you just, you're already saved, but you're just going through something and you want somebody to pray for you. This is your invitation to have someone pray for you right now. Just reach your hand up. They'll come to you. Will you come? Let this opportunity pass. selection following our closing selection by the choir we'll have Reverend Smith come forward and give us our benediction amen Lord make me hope more holy
just look to be dismissed. Father, we just thank you for this moment in time. We thank you for your word. We thank you for all that you do for us. So now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and master, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let us all say amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. May God be with you. Make sure you shake the preacher's hand. <laughs>